The FAA just released a report on a glider accident that took the life of a tow pilot. In aviation, we often talk about the Swiss cheese model, in which several things need to go wrong before a serious accident occurs. Today, we're going to talk about this accident and how we can prevent things like this in the future. Before we talk about the accident, though, we're going to need to talk about how gliders are brought aloft. The most stunning type of launch is called a winch launch, in which a glider is brought aloft by a ground-based motor. The glider and the winch are attached via a cable that's usually several thousand feet long. The launch starts with the winch pulling the glider along the ground until it reaches sufficient flying speed. The glider then pulls up abruptly, often leaving it in a 45 degree maximum climb. In this type of launch, you can think of the glider as a kite being pulled aloft by a child. The forces pulling back on the winch are often quite substantial, meaning that the winch either needs to be very heavy or very well anchored to the ground. The most common type of glider launch is called an aero tow, where a tow plane pulls a glider aloft using a long cable. For a new pilot, learning to fly aero tow is actually quite challenging. Think of it like flying a mandatory formation flight. In these aero tows, the glider pilot needs to keep the tow plane right above the horizon, which keeps the glider right above the tow plane's wake. In training, to build coordination, a glider pilot is often asked to box the wake, where they have to fly a box pattern right around the tow plane's wake. It's also important to note that in training, you're always told that if you ever lose sight of the tow plane, you're to pull the release and get away from the situation. Now, tow plane's winches also have cutaway mechanisms in case the glider has problems releasing or there's some other issue. The first way is really only used in tow planes, which uses a ring on the end of the cable attaching it to the tail of the tow plane. The tow pilot can pull a cable and it will release that tow rope. Unfortunately, if you can't release from the end of the cable, such as if you're pulling onto a spool, you need to cut the cable to release it. That's the system typically used in winches in modern tow systems. With modern tow plane systems, they have a winch inside the tow plane that's able to retract the tow rope after the glider releases. Tow systems are also supposed to have a weak link, which is usually a rope designed to be weaker than the rest of the system. These are usually attached on the end of the tow rope and are designed to break before anything on the glider or the tow plane breaks. So now that we have a baseline of how gliders are launched, let's talk about this accident. This happened between a Schweitzer 123 and a Belanca Scout during the early stages of an aero tow. Shortly after the 123 became airborne, its canopy became unlatched. During the FAA investigation, they checked the canopy and found that it was in working order. Now, glider canopies can be notoriously finicky. Modern gliders often have a mechanism that lets you know if they're closed correctly, often a flag or alternate coloration, but the Schweitzer 123 was built in 1948. So after the canopy blew open, the glider pilot pulled up abruptly while they tried to close the canopy again. According to the FAA report, the glider pilot became quite disoriented in this situation. The glider then leveled off and even began to descend until it abruptly pulled up again. Remember that a glider and a winch launch can actually exert quite a heavy force even when pulling up at a very steep angle. At this point, the tow plane would have had it stick all the way back, desperately trying to keep the nose up. Later in the wreckage, they found the tow cable severed with the guillotine in its deployed position. Unfortunately, these measures were insufficient and the tow plane impacted the ground at a 45 degree angle. The glider pilot was able to eventually close the canopy and turn around to do a safe downwind landing. In aviation, we often refer to the Swiss cheese model. We have so many redundancies in place that several failures need to happen before a serious accident occurs. And in this accident, it's no different. The easy answer is that the glider pilot should have secured the canopy better, but that's only part of the story. If the canopy latch had failed through no fault of the pilot, then this accident could still possibly have been avoided. When the canopy opened, the glider pilot effectively lost control of their airplane. Instead of flying the plane, they let it get away from them. Had they maintained control or simply cut away, this accident would have been avoided. From the satellite imagery, it looks like there was plenty of landing spots in front of them. As for the tow pilot, they had options as well. They delayed in pulling the guillotine until it was way too late. Now I haven't ever activated a guillotine, and I suspect most pilots haven't due to their destructive nature on the cable, but it's possible that those guillotines require significantly more force or more time than is expected. This could have led to those delays. This may indicate a poor design or poor maintenance, but it wasn't indicated in the FAA report that they even investigated this. Either way, there were several seconds between the glider getting out of position and the nose down attitude. The tow pilot could have been paying much closer attention to the glider and pull that cable cut a lot sooner. This is also a good case for a traditional release mechanism that doesn't destroy the cable. A tow pilot may be less likely to pull a guillotine if it's going to cut the cable and possibly shut down flight operations for the day. Even experienced pilots may delay in action, thinking they might get out of the situations they have before. So from seeing this accident, I've learned a few lessons, and I hope you have too. And if you want to see my take on another gliding accident from a few years ago, you can click over here. And until next time, fly safe.